doing some from there. It's so exciting. We can't quite believe how exciting this is. Can we zoom in on that? What are the children seeing? What's going on here, Mr. Scrackler? Well, they're just... The children are just pointing out the things that Google are probably having a little look at from, from the satellite. One of those. We are absolutely over the moon to be the UK country champion for world creativity and innovation week. Whoops, we don't really want to play again, do we? No, I think we're going to have a problem with that happening regularly, actually. That's a bit annoying. Um, here I am. Here I am on a cardboard <laughs> cathedral, <laughs> literally. A cardboard cathedral. You, you can't make this stuff up. Um, and I guess that's why we have an imagination. A lot of people spend a lot of time teaching it out of some of our young people. Um, and I think if we zoom in, this is, this is a cardboard cathedral. We built in a school playing field here in Coventry um, about a month ago for a weekend family creativity festival that we, we created with a school community in here in Coventry. And it was basically to represent, to inspire the children of that city to connect with schools across the country, to connect with other communities around the world. Um, because this year Coventry is the UK City of Culture 2021. I don't know if you knew that, it was due to kick off in January, obviously with the virus and with COVID it's been put back. Um, so basically, we got in early. <laughs> we did a three-day weekend festival here on this cardboard pyramid stage that, that you've obviously seen um, seen me, me mucking about on here. Um, and we had a fantastic weekend. We had performances. We had art exhibitions. We had, do you know what? It's so annoying. It's, there's a setting that's making that play every time I go to it. And, and it's really annoying me because it's, it's turned off everywhere. I think what I'll do is I'll just close it. There we go. I've got rid of that and that's closed. So um, that's not going to play anymore. If I need it, I have to bring it back again. <laughs> this is uh, this is the rock and roll life that I that I live with this new technology. Um, but as you say, we don't need to be afraid of failure. So um, so here we are. And and basically all we're doing is we're just video streaming. Now, I, I think the world deserves a bit more than another Zoom meeting. Some people have sussed out green screens and they can have a green screen background behind them in a Zoom meeting. And we have literally built this cardboard set in computer graphics uh, for that weekend festival. And what we're gonna be doing over the next week is we're gonna be taking this to school communities around the UK all over the country to inspire kids. And I'm, by, I mean UK. So we want to go to Wales, we want to go to Scotland, we want to go to Northern Ireland. So if you know any schools in those areas, any school communities who would like a free half day Inspire a Nation 21 assembly recording, it's about 30, 30, 45 minutes, not half day, 30 to 45 minutes session, where we will live stream to wherever they are. And then the idea is that later in the year, we go and see them in the summer term, hopefully, we go and see them and run a real creativity event in that school community. And we want to do that with school communities all across the UK. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity for, for us to meet people, for us to in, inspire, to engage, to bring the communities, to bring the parents, to bring businesses, to bring local artists and creatives into those school communities to work with those children. So that's that's what we're about, and that's what we're doing in the next in the next few months, basically, but certainly in the next week. So on Monday, we're going to be going down to Prince of Wales School down there in Dorchester to meet the head teacher there, uh, Mr. Spracklin, Gary Spracklin, who is the most incredible head teacher. I mean, this is a guy who fills the, the school hall with snow and puts a, a, a railway engine going around a giant Christmas tree and Father Christmas that the children can ride on. You know, that is the school I wish I'd been to. Um, and, and he has a concept called Inspired to Learn. 
inspired to learn, to engage and inspire those children. So they learn not just making them sit in rows, no silent corridors in his school. He actually celebrates corridors as creative spaces, places to connect, places to communicate, to be inspired and, and, and to obviously connect the various parts of the school. So, so Gary Spracklin is, is going to be doing that on Monday. So we're, going to be, we're actually moving all our studio kit down to Dorchester on Sunday, we're building the cardboard pyramid stage that I'm not pyramid stage, the cardboard cathedral that I'm on at the moment. We're going to be building that on his playing field. And then Monday, we're going to be doing a day of live stream stuff. So we're going to be running activities for the children. We're doing assembly first thing in the morning. And then at the end of the day, we will, or it's actually about 12 30, we'll publish that program over the weekend. Um, we will we will have a session uh, where we'll talk to Mr. Spracklin about his inspired to learn um his inspired to learn met methodology if you like now i did actually put a shout out to say to people that we we're going to have a zoom room now i don't know if anybody's in that zoom room so this is where i have to run zoom i'll pull zoom up and i'll show just really what we're doing today is we're just testing the system because i haven't used it for a little bit so i'm going to go um let's go into this zoom meeting over here that looks like that's working join with computer audio now you can it, you can actually take for granted how hard this is <laughs> and there's nobody in the zoom room that's good so if anybody wanted to come into the zoom room if anybody anybody in the audience wants to come on and speak and be part of this then you can come uh the, the, the web link is on the uh is on the web page for the event i'll post that in the in the, the, the comments now so let's just post that in there so i'm going to pop a message in oh i didn't put my i didn't send my hello world message should i there you go hello world Okay, so I've typed a message in and I can now flash that up on the screen. As Claire now realizes, every message I pop up for you, and I've got that on Twitter, that's gone to Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. And anybody typing a message in on any of those three platforms, I can pull those together and then and then squirt them out on the on squirt them out to everybody to see there. Um, so if anybody does want to come into the chat room, into the Zoom room, so I'll post the link in the chats here. So for all the links and info, go to www.smeenco.org.uk. The world created in the, 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 the yeah, 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 that's it. So that is, I've just posted a link and that's for the main event. What's nice, Claire? Something's nice. Oh, nice, because I typed something. I'm not a bad typer. I'm in a transition with my eyes. I've spent so much time in front of a screen. I've got to use my glasses when I do small stuff. And, and later on, if anybody's interested, I'm going to try and show you the kit I've got here. Because don't tell anybody, but I'm not actually on a um, pyramid stage. I'm not, I keep saying pyramid stage. We've actually got a Glastonbury pyramid stage. We're going to be doing a Glastonbury festival <laughs> later this year. Um, so that's, and we've got a very, very exciting partner that we're going to be doing that with, which we'll be announcing in the next few months. A big arts festival have asked me to be the patron actually, which is fantastic. So we're going to do a whole month of stuff with that community. Um, we'll probably take the cardboard cathedral down to that, although they've actually got an amazing parish church there as it is. Um, <laughs> so that'll be something, that'll definitely be something for them to look forward to. Um, so we're, and we're going to put our, we're going to put our cardboard Glastonbury pyramid stage up for those people to, to sort of run events on. So we're going to do a weekend community art festival in that community, but connecting everybody across the country. And in fact, if not the whole world, as we did last year, we did a weekend Glastonbury festival last year. Hello, who have we got here? Oh, Olaf's here. Hello, Olaf. Lovely to see you. Olaf's in the house. Ancien de Clara one. I'd love to know what all that means because um, he'll probably tell me in a minute. Um, so, Olaf, if you look on the website, you might actually be able to come into the the Zoom room, actually. I haven't tested the audio and stuff. This is really complicated, and as you'll see later. I've actually, believe it or not, I've got three computers in front of me. Well, one laptop in front of me here, which you can't see. And then two big screens either side. See, my arms get chopped off. Look, that's not a good look, is it? Um, and then I've got another laptop down here. So I'm, I've actually got to do lots of screen sharing and saving and, and all this sort of stuff. It looks like that should work. But I've got to, the only problem is I've got to make sure I only send you the audio without you. It's called Mix Minus. It's really complicated. And I've got 20 audio field things in front of me. So I am rabbiting on a little bit. Is Tom here as well? Hello, hello, Olaf. You're saying that Tom's here. You said hello, Tom. So basically, everybody, we had a little, um, we had a Twitter um, Spaces thing last night, which is the first time we've ever used it. I don't know if you've heard of Twitter Spaces, but Twitter Spaces is, is an audio thing. It's a bit like Zoom, but with just audio and no video. Now, you might think, well, hang on, is that progressed? 
we've got video, we've got to take it out and just have audio. But it was an amazing dynamic because I was sitting there literally as my car was being, um, had a, having a new uh, tow bar fitted to it. And, um, and I started to spit Twitter spaces and I had a chat with Olaf who I met who's in Dundee. We had Tom from Leeds, a chat called, I think Khalid it was from the uh, Middle East and somebody else came on as well it's absolutely brilliant so we just had a bit of a chat and those people olaf's rocked up tonight and he's connected me with other people and that's how we want this to work we want to demonstrate how art connects i love art because art is what we call it when what we do might connect us to somebody else so if anybody wants to go to the zoom room now i've just got to keep an eye and make sure i if you you've got to go to the waiting room for that our safeguarding policies are that we do hold people in waiting rooms at the moment we might free that up at some stage Got to keep an eye on my processing. So my rendering times are good. So I'm absolutely hammering this. I've got one of the most powerful laptops you can buy. It was actually the second most powerful laptop that Dell sell. And it, it, it has had a bit of a problem with my electrics occasionally. So I've got to be careful with it. And it does get hammered on the processing. But it seems to be working OK, actually. So it's still Sander right there, Claire. I don't know if you're still there, actually. Oh, gosh, we've got lots of people. Six people. Good. Goodness me. That's, that's not a bad number, actually, for this early in the, in the session. So if you've only just joined us, we are actually live streaming the first day of World Creativity and Innovation Week here on a cardboard Coventry Cathedral. Coventry Cathedral was bombed during the war, the original one. And we have rebuilt it, if you like, in cardboard to signify how car not just Coventry rose from the ashes, but how this country, how the world needs to rise from the ashes of the coronavirus um, lockdown outbreak. And we've got to find our art. We've got to find our creativity. We've got to connect. And let's face it, we had a lot of practice for that in lockdown, didn't we? We realised what it was that made us human, and it was that human connection. And quite often that comes from art. And you may have seen Grayson Perry and um, and his fantastic show with his with his partner, his wife, uh, Philippa Perry. Absolutely wonderful show, Grayson's Art Club. If you didn't see that, check that out. Because if, if there was a telly show, I wish I'd been able to make, that would have been it. And obviously I'd have needed to win a... Uh, with a Turner Prize first. We sound great. Thanks for that, Claire. That's always good to know. We appreciate a little bit of feedback from our audience. Um, I, don't, do you, I don't know if you fancy coming in the Zoom room, Claire, and, and having a little chat. Um, we've got all sorts of ways of getting people involved. Now, believe it or not, I, I, well, you probably don't, or you probably will, or you may not even care. It might not be that amazing. But over there, I have to, be, I have to point over there, there's another little table. And if any of you wanted to Skype in and call us on Skype, and put a green background behind you, then you could stand behind that table over there and look like you're on the stage with me. And this is what we're, we're quite keen to test out. You can do it on Skype. Um, you could do it on Zoom at a push, but I'd rather not use Zoom. To be honest, I'd like to get some people in on Zoom. And what we'll do, if anybody comes in on Zoom, I'll put them up behind me over here. We'll, well, may, maybe in the middle, actually. Um, and if anybody wants to come in properly and have a little bit of a chat, then, um, then they could do that. I don't know if you've. I don't know if you're still there, Olaf. But if you've got, um, if you've got Skype or Claire, if you've got Skype, um, I'm reluctant to put our Skype address out publicly at the moment. I would have a problem with that. Yeah, I've got three that I don't really want because this is going to go on YouTube. We should probably just set one up that we don't mind using for moments like this. But if if you want to. I don't know if you're on Twitter, Claire, or anything like that, but if you can contact us directly if you wanted to try that, or just come in the Zoom room and I could send you a private message in Zoom. So really what, what I wanted to do today, I wanted to have a bit of a ramble about what it is that we're um, we're going to be talking about. And I've, I've got another laptop down here, and I'm good, I am didn't set this up before we started, because I had a bit of a mad day getting a web page up, believe it or not. So let's get this up. Oh, that's not got an internet connection. Why is that? It's because I've unplugged the internet cable. That's never a good start if you want the internet. Unplugging your internet cable is not a good look. So I should be able to pull this laptop up and get it up on a screen in the mix. And then we can have a look at what we're up to. We could maybe have a look at what's going on around the world. And we'll be able to restream that stuff. So if we find something that's happening in the world right now, uh, there's an amazing project going on in New York, which I, I saw earlier. And what, what I was going to do is actually just have a browse around the web, look at the stuff that's happening on World Internet Creativity Day, and do some restreaming, beat people up, make some connections, maybe get them on the show next Wednesday, because next Wednesday is World Creativity and Innovation Day. That's the day. And we want to pack that day full of stuff. So we're hoping Olaf 
Okay, Claire, you've only got Zoom. Okay, well, that's not a problem. If you want to, if you wanted to come on, um, the 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 Zoom link. Whoop, is that ringing me? Whoops, somebody just rang me. I'm gonna go on silent for that. Um, if you want to, if you want to come on, Claire, and say hello, then go to the Zoom uh, the Zoom link, uh, which is in that web page. I'll, I'll put a specific web link in there. So www.steamco.org.uk the SCA. World Creative Innovation Week 21, uh, and then Thurs 15. Today's the 15th, isn't it? So that should be the link. This is the page for today and includes a link to the Zoom room. So if you were to click on the link I'm just about to post now, um, the studio audience. Okay, I'm trying to do everything I can to avoid this looking and feeling like a Zoom meeting. So I think we're all zoomed out, aren't we? Well, I haven't had that many, but I, I just kept myself to myself in most of lockdown. Believe that, believe anything. So this is the place for today. Uh, today's event. This, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a rotter, a bit, of a bit of a rascal. I am. I tend to put lots of typos in. It doesn't look good afterwards. So today's event. Okay, so this is the page for today's event. So I've just popped that in there. If you click on, oh, goodness me, hey, Twitter's truncated that for some reason. That's really weird. Okay. Um, you've got a link there in Facebook. So if you click on that link, that should take you to a web page which has got a link for, um, which has got a link to um, Zoom Room. And I'll see you come up, he says, just checking there's nobody in the Zoom room. There's only one participant and that participant is me at the moment. So basically you'll come up in the Zoom room over there and then I'll be able to pull you up and put you up on the screen up there. And then you'll be able to chat to me and fill a few gaps. Okay, so I've got text flying left, right and centre here. I'm actually doing this all the way. And we had a grant for the whole of last year, which bought the equipment and enabled us to get some interns and some production assistants. And we didn't get a grant two weeks ago. So I'm doing it all on my own. I am in a room, a back bedroom that's been converted into a television studio. I'll probably show you later on if you're interested. So it's, I'm, I'm doing all this on my own in, in this room here, which is all good. You know, we, don't, we don't really care too much. So I've got to do something to get NDI tools up here. So NDI um oh dear, dear, dear. Uh, this is probably quite boring isn't it i'm kind of hoping somebody's going to come in on um well i think that got it going that's probably got this is it no. um it's also just so crazy isn't it and olaf's here as well let's get olaf in as well so speak of you olaf's here as well hello olaf um, that it's, it's nice oh, to see you hello. good evening do you guys know each other well i could i could i could do oh, that's that's working okay so let's so we've got audio feedback there are you have you got us running on um oh is it is it, is it me on no have you got me on another tab open or anything no there's a bit of a delay there no maybe it's me i've got I've, let's get olaf in as well so, have you got um you haven't got any earphones have you Olaf by any chance or Claire or anything like that? I have. You, oh you got them in, have you? Oh, hello. Good evening. Um, you guys know each other. Because what's happening, Good. Olaf, is we're getting your audio that's coming through on YouTube about 15 seconds behind, I think. Oh, you got me on Have you got me on another tab open or anything? No, it's a bit of a delay there. No, maybe it's me. I've got I've, No, it's me. Olaf in as well. Um, have you got um you haven't got any earphones have you olaf by any chance i've got Claire, hearing aids like i have you, oh you've got them in have you i've lost my sound now you're not missing much at the moment to be honest <laughs> olaf as we're getting your audio that's coming to on youtube about 15 seconds behind i think yeah is that better i can hear you you got me on another tab oh, my sound's gone. Now I've taken my headphones off. It hasn't resorted back to my phone. Hasn't it? Um, I've got earphones, have you, Olaf? I've got hearing aids. 
I've lost my sound now. So we've, we've got real, we've got some weird stuff going on here. Olaf, I'm going I'm to mute you for a second, Olaf, and just see if that stops that. Right, it has. Claire, can you talk to me? I'm, I can't really hear at the moment. You can't hear me? Very faintly. Oh, that's interesting. There's a good signal going down the system. We just test the audio and see what we've got. Um, test one two test one two there's a good signal going down there test one two test one two there's a good signal going down so i don't know if you need to adjust the volume at your end or something so olaf are you back listen you back are you olaf i'm back in zoom i i did have other things open so that's, that's what it was gone. we'll we'll allow you back on those terms but it's I, great this hi claire thanks for coming on board. hello it's nice to, nice to actually um meet you face to face absolutely brilliant oh is this a connection is it we've got going on here <laughs> very, you've got a very talented lady here i have to say incredibly talented well that's fantastic <laughs> let's um let's just bounce you from there then claire for a moment i'm, I'm going to move that over here so, so claire tell us a little bit about you and, and what you do your claim to fame I can hear you, Claire. Can you not hear me? Go on, Claire. I just can't hear. You can't hear me. I, I th is that your headphones, you do you muted? think? We're not muted, no. We can hear you, Claire. You you sometimes can have problems with wireless um wireless headphones can trip the system out a bit sometimes. I don't know if you just check your settings on Zoom, Claire. You've gone quite quiet, completely quiet. Actually. Oh. Oh, that's good. Can you hear I me? I can hear. I yeah, I can now put my headphones back in. That usually yeah. helps, doesn't it? Having your headphones in your ears. Yeah, I don't want to get too technical <laughs> too early. <laughs> Hi, Claire. That's better. Hello. Uh, uh, Nick, I'd like to introduce Claire to you. Please um, do. I, I, I've um, known Claire for probably just over a year, maybe less, and our communications have been around a number of things about creativity, about home education. And Claire has been pivotal in doing some really innovative work in Portsmouth. And uh, oh. she's really, really um, inter interconnected with a whole raft of uh, businesses and university within, within uh, Portsmouth. So th that's my little introduction for Claire. Please uh, feel free to amplify, amplify any of that, Claire. Well, yeah, before, thank you. So, yeah. before you do, I've got to say there's one thing I'd say that serendipity is my rocket fuel. And I've got a bit of a Portsmouth thing bubbling at the moment. And I'll tell you later. Really? I'll tell you later. But there have been two things happened today. Um, and I've got a bit of a plan for the south for that sort of south coast area. So tell me about you and and we'll sort of put two and two together, maybe. But yes, yeah, it's wonderful. Great start. Thanks, Ola, for that. Uh, yeah, so I run a social enterprise called Seekers Create and uh, work with young people to build confidence in their creativity and um, kind of created a programme called Seek Your Spark. Um, and the way that we deliver the programme is through trails and trail making. So we do a lot of um, heritage trails, um, sort of getting young people out, exploring their local neighbourhood and um, taking photographs, making little videos about it and putting it into a trail. And we've um, recently started creating interactive maps. Um, oh, my goodness. Serendipity coming out of the woodwork here, Claire. This is brilliant. Keep it, <laughs> just, you just keep talking. This is brilliant. Um, yeah, so I've been doing this, well, this programme, I've been running it for about the last six years. Um, so it's a real passion of mine. It's about um, unlocking the door to your imagination. Um, I've got a thing for doors um yeah so and it's just gets well, it's lots of opportunities for our young people so providing volunteering and work experience um so they can come along and work on uh different parts of the trails that they're interested in so it might be writing a blog a poem a song um drawing a picture uh, lots of different things but they get to choose what they want to do and then we can also link them up with our contributors. So we work with lots of different um, businesses and social enterprises. Um, so yeah, it's it's really good opportunities for them, especially now when there's 
not so many opportunities uh, work experience so yeah so That's we work wonderful. with universities and, and uh, how are you how are you structured and, how are you how are you kind of governanced or structured as an organization or so, is it a casual yeah, we're a community interest company. Great, that's a great format, isn't it? Very easy, yeah. fairly hands-free. It's a light touch governance, enough to make sure that you know there's no profit yeah. and your 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 aims are right. But it, it just means you don't get buried in trustees and all the charitable governance, isn't it? It's brilliant. Yes, I recommend that to yeah, everybody. You, get... you can start a CIC in 24 hours, can't you? It's just brilliant and get yeah. cracking, get on with the, doing the good work. Yeah, brilliant. So this is actually my second social enterprise. So um, I've been doing this stuff for quite some time and I, um, I'm a fellow of the School for Social Entrepreneurs um, and they're a great bunch to get involved with like-minded people. Um, so yeah. Fantastic. I've been doing that a long time I, I, now. I must admit, I'm not familiar with the, fe the fellow of the School of Entrepreneurs. That sounds, um, sounds quite interesting. Yeah, it might be worth you looking, like hooking up with them actually. Yeah, that, no, that sounds really, really good. Well, what a fantastic connection. So, are, are you are, are you familiar with Arts Work, who are based down in in that area, the uh, the Arts Council Bridge organisation for, for for the South East? I have I have met them in the past. I think um, yeah, a few times. Uh, um, I think if that's yeah, Arts Work organisation. I think arts I met work, them at the right. Tower. They're they're in, they're in they're in a row of quite posh buildings. Looks like a Georgian row of mansions. Um, fit very central. The word spinnaker doesn't ring a bell, I must admit. But um, they had a, a fantastic lady called Jane Bryant, who was their CEO for 10, 20 years, and she was she retired recently um, to run her choir, bless her. Brilliant, lovely lady. And there's a new CEO taken over there. I haven't met her yet, but they do a lot of very good work. And in fact, their area is the southeast of England, apart from London. You know, so that's quite a big patch uh, that they administer Arts Council funding into into education although those bridge organizations are, i think are being wound up in the next year or so oh fantastic so and and, and i mean a, a couple of the connections for me really is that um the, the culture minister you're familiar with gosport i presume over there in um, yes why, why do you smile is that is that a particularly sort of close to your heart um, or? So, yeah well uh, we work with the cadet forces and in particular the sea cadets um and, and gosport so we've been over there and we've run some um trail making stuff and some um, music workshops with them so yeah oh wonderful oh, that's, and we that's plan nice. to do we've got a lot more in the pipeline as well so they're we're, they're doing a whole um trail making competition um that we're working with them on so all good oh, brilliant. stuff and are parades you... we're doing some parades with them <laughs> do you because they're um their mp down there is a lady called caroline dinage yes and she's the culture minister minister of culture and art I'm yet um, to meet her actually. I'd like to. I'd quite like to meet her actually. She she was very very generous. She did um she made a, a video for us a couple of weeks ago that um at we I don't I, did, you you saw us set here didn't you? So you you've been you've been on the line for about half an hour haven't you? So you saw you saw the start of this session. Yeah. Um. So basically the uh, so so your you and I are, are on this big cardboard cathedral stage here that you can now see in front of you hopefully. So I yeah. bet you never. Th I bet you that now that is a moment of glory for you, isn't it? To be on a big stage here and you know, in, in, in Coventry at the moment. Um, but we we did actually. I'll see if I can find it. Actually, we we had a wonderful video. So, so Caroline sent us a video for our event where um, the three day event we did here in um, in Coventry, and it was a lovely film. I'll pull it up. Actually, it's only a minute long, but it, it you know it's not every day that the you know the culture minister supports a kind of grassrootsy type thing like this, which. You know, it was really very sweet. Why can't I find that? Uh, that doesn't want to come up, does it? Hang on, what's going on? Oh, here we, there she is. Right. Oh, what's she got on that? I'll play you the video. Where is it? Audio. You yeah. Could you just mention a little bit about the Lido as well? Yes, so um, I'm also a trustee of um, Hilsey Lido, um, which is um, an amazing space in um, Portsmouth North, and it's got a 67 metre pool and um, various buildings. Um, yeah, so we're um, looking to um, 
reopen hopefully in May um, and we're doing lots of good work there we've got a um, working party now um, which is on Facebook and we've got in the month we had over 300 members join and they're um, we actively um, getting the site ready so they're doing lots of DIY jobs and um, painting and decorating and doing some carpentry and we've got a little um, ceremony that we're holding at the end of April um, it's the opening of the door ceremony and we've got some old doors from um, a ship called the Malcolm Miller um, okay. and we've got lots of um, sailing folk coming along and hopefully the local um, MP and other people joining us um, yeah so lots happening there as well so lots going on you'll have to see if you can get Caroline Dynish to pop down she was uh, as I say she's a, she's a good sport uh, in fact if I just cut over here now yeah you can I think you can probably see actually we've got um such a great privilege go. to be invited to speak to you all today. I have absolutely no doubt that this three-day community art festival will showcase all that's possible when creative industries work with schools and local communities to inspire, to enlighten and to motivate despite these really difficult times. And at times like these, maintaining our creativity is such a key thing, particularly for children, as it gives them a space to express themselves and to continue to grow. The government's unprecedented one and a half billion pound cultural recovery fund is the biggest ever cash injection into UK arts and culture and is being distributed right across the cultural ecosystem. So I'm delighted this fund has helped to progress your plans in delivering to your communities throughout lockdown. By collaborating with and sharing experiences with arts and education organisations across the country, grassroots community engagement is helping and supporting the rebirth of the arts and culture scene right across the UK. With your passion and your drive for that strong local engagement, I look forward to seeing how your future plans will be the key stepping stones to enable the cultural sector to grow. Now, Coventry Libraries are also set for an amazing City of Culture year with a whole host of new activities and events for children and families. They provide a range of cultural activities in a safe environment to assist development, education and entertainment. And finally, I want to mention the fantastic year of events we have in 2022. And this all springs, of course, from Coventry's year as the City of Culture, leading on to the Birmingham Commonwealth Games, the Platinum Jubilee and Festival UK 2022. These and many other events will create an outstanding year, celebrating our creativity and our brilliant communities. And it all starts right here in Coventry. I want to thank the lovely organisers of Coventry 21 Community Art Festival and all those participating in this week's events for all your wonderful effort and great hard work. I hope you all have a fantastic time. Wasn't that lovely? What do you think of that then? <laughs> right. Very, very pleased with that, I must admit. Um, but she mentioned that, I don't know if you've heard of a thing called the... Um, Festival UK 2022, have you come across that? No. Right, so that's, I hope you're, you're still listening, Olaf. So basically, it's a national festival of creativity that the government have allocated £120 million to. And they, they commissioned 10 teams to go away and produce a tenth of it across the whole of the UK. Now, we were told about this two years ago, got very excited and were very keen to be part of it. But when they announced how they were going to do it, it was a bit too big for us, really, because our strategy is very grassroots. And what we want to do and wanted to do and still want to do is, is something we're calling hashtag Festival 22, which we want to complement that national event at grassroots by connecting people like you and Olaf. I mean, the fact that we're here wherever we are, I can't remember, to be honest, and you're there in Portsmouth, and Olaf is up there in, um, in uh, let me get rid of my, my view there, Olaf's up there in, um, in Dundee. You know, this is wonderful. This is a wonderful power, a testament to the power of creativity, of connectivity, of being human, quite literally. Um, so, so for Festival 22, we want to put 
shudder the thought, 22 people like me on the road with little what we call Steamco pop-up trucks that went that so they can go into any school community, they can go to any event and they can run mini creativity festivals with those communities. But also integrating with and amplifying, if you like, the language, the work that's being done by Festival 2022, the big thing. So you know, they'll do lots of sort of fancy big wheels and fireworks and really cool creative engagement. And they've got an amazing woman we were talking to the other day. Uh, who's doing some stuff with Jodrell Banks. It's all around STEAM and science, technology, engineering, art, maths, and creativity. It's going to be fantastic. It's had a lot of bad press because people are calling it the Brexit Festival. Haters are going to hate. You know, we don't do the party politics. We do policy politics. If anybody from any political party starts kicking off about creativity or art or children or communities, we'll, we'll, we'll take them on. We'll, we'll question that. We'll challenge that. We'll call them out. We, we don't do this party politics stuff. You know, I, I make no secret about it. I personally um, wasn't a big fan of Brexit. I marched against it. The Creative Industries Federation, we're a member of, came out against it. And, and a lot of people in the creative industries were against it. But we've got to move on. So to call it the Brexit Festival, I think is provocative and unnecessarily divisive. Um, and I had, I had a letter in The Guardian a couple of weeks ago about this. And I wrote a big blog because I think there's a whole agenda around that, which I'm not going to go into now. The point is that... 2022 we need to get 22 of me's on the road and going from one of me to 22 of me is quite a big leap by anybody's imagination so what we want to do this year is to put three of me's on the road three trucks in three parts of the country now if one of those was was dundee that would be amazing because i want one in one of the the the, the the four parts of the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland and England. I want at least three of those to be covered, if not four. Um, but if we could do one in Portsmouth, how fantastic would that be to, to do one literally on Caroline's doorstep? So yeah, that it, you know, so, so she could actually be part of that R&D process and she could say what works, what doesn't, point us to communities. And so we could get a minister if you're like out of their ivory tower, and I don't think she's one to sit around in ivory tower. She looks like the sort of person who rolls the sleeves up and gets stuck in, to be too honest, and not wanted to be too, too sort of sycophantic, if you like. But, you know, if we, so, and, and also the South Coast, you've got that coastal town deprivation as well. You've got a lot of challenges in that whole area. So if we were to put one of our trucks on the South Coast, that could go as far as Brighton and all the way down the coast to, say, Weymouth and cover that whole area. And we're launching... Um, a big event on Monday um, down in Dorchester. I'm down. In, I'm taking all this kit down to Dorchester on Monday. So, so that was part of that serendipity, really. Um, there was another reason as well. I think I, I actually. I think that I think the other thing was I, I did notice. I realised now that Olaf told me about your work, and I saw the Lido work that you you've done as well, and, and that project as well. And I think I put two and two together, and that was one of my my serendipity wasn't quite as serendipitous as I'd quite like to have imagined it was. But um, what are your thoughts, Claire, about? about a festival like that if you hadn't heard of that 120 million pounds everybody says it should be better spent on the nhs and it's hard to argue with that but as winston churchill said after the war what's the point if we don't spend money on the arts and creativity in our communities what, what's your thought about that claire i think it's very important um we've, i've been working with um, portsmouth creates as well so they're um they plan to hold a um street art and light festival um every year now so the first one's going to be in november and um, yeah. so yeah yeah so we've got all the contacts there and the good work that they're doing so if you know in some ways it can all link up um i mean portsmouth is absolutely full of amazing creative people um yeah so definitely should come to portsmouth <laughs> Well, I mean, I'd, I, if I were to do that, you see, what I'd want to do, if, if at all possible, would be to, to to collaborate with people like you and help build those teams because I've got to recruit somebody like me. Now, that, you know, that that what everyone thinks of that, good or bad. I mean, let, let's look at my skill set. I've got a master's degree in electronic engineering. I've got grade A design A level and a big mouth, as you've noticed. So I kind of get the technology I'm creatively aware and I love selling a good story, you know. So for years I worked in advertising, marketing, digital media experience, events, past my 50th. And I thought, what am I going to do now? So this project really is about selling creativity. It's, it's about selling the power of art, where art for us is, is the combination of creativity, tools, 
and people that use their tools to to Im, Im, to unlock that creativity. Tools could be technology. Technology is only something that was invented after somebody was born. After all, isn't it? An iPhone's not a te isn't technology to a baby born next week. You know, so 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 that's really where where we're we're coming from. What what are your thoughts? So yeah. Olaf, what, what are your thoughts on that, Olaf? Well. I think uh, you asked whether the money for funding festivals um, is worth worth doing as opposed to investing into the health service. I think we've got two different um, uh, games played there, really. The Scottish Government have announced that should uh, the current uh, governing body get in again, they will spend more on NHS. So they're going to do that anyway. So I think um, that's dealing with the backlog of um, medical uh, interventions that are required. And we're talking about 47 million uh, hospital operations that have been postponed across the UK. I think, I think there are people who might not have a physical ailment that can be seen or uh, whatever, but mental well-being and and confidence can actually be enhanced through the arts and by the arts. And I think people coming together um, to make things, uh, to create, to share, to talk about, builds a sense of community. And I, I would hope that. Um, your your ideas of um, twenty two other uh, ambassadors for the arts touring uh, the UK and working with perhaps communities where they feel they've been forgotten um, and with it, with you know whatever to create and and make is is brilliant. It's got to happen uh, as opposed to carrying on the same old thing and firefighting. So the arts offer so much in terms of um, innovation, experimentation, but above all, play, make, and control. Play with the process, make with the process, revisit the process, and have control. And I think with those three words, an individual can gain great confidence, not against anyone else, but for themselves. Uh, and it's it, it's something in the in, in the education world. It's called ipsative, me against myself, and it, it's that notion of how am I compared to how I was before? And and the and and then we can have this celebratory exhibition, virtual exhibition, a kaleidoscope of work coming together from individuals, from children, young people, young adults, families, and communities. So I, I'm all for it, um, Nick. That, that, that probably doesn't surprise me, but it's great. <laughs> it's great to hear. Uh, three words I'd like to add to that is, as well is explore, discover, create. Yes. Explore your dreams, discover opportunity, create your future. And that's Brilliant. sort of what the words that I Brilliant. like to use. Brilliant. <laughs> lovely. Three words. That's lovely. lovely. I did a we did a brainstorm actually a few months ago. Um, have you heard of an organization called 64 million um, artists? Have you come across them? Every January, they do a thing called the January Challenge, and they do it. They issue a different creative challenge every single day of the of the the, the, the month. Um, wonderful organisation, and um, and and we we did a break. We we had a competition to design an I Love Art T-shirt or logo. So the idea is people design their own heart, but in fact they designed the whole I Love Art logo, and it was wonderful. We had three hundred entries, and we we printed ten of them up on T-shirts and sent them out, and. And 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 what what was really lovely was that we did a we we did an awards ceremony if you like we pretended we were at the Tate Modern down on on the on Bankside, and we we had a brainstorm of what a festival might look like. So we got the post-it notes out and we, we sat down and we had people came up with words what festivals meant to them and it was absolutely wonderful. Really, really was. And I, I think it's. I'm in a way. I mean, COVID. I mean, my mother's got double pneumonia. She's very poorly, and it's it's affected a lot of people really badly. But it's given us a lot of opportunity, and a lot of good stuff has come from this, isn't it? I wouldn't have this technology now. We wouldn't be speaking now if it hadn't happened. We'd all be in our little bubbles, and I think we have to leverage not only the connections that we have made, but the technology that enables us to make a lot more. Um, and and that's what I'm very very keen to do moving forward over the next. 
over the next year, certainly certainly the next six months, to build on that and build the momentum. We were disappointed not to get a grant, but at the same time, we were very, very lucky with um, with the funding we did get. So not unduly too concerned about that, as long as we can get through the summer. And in the next three months, we're, we're, we're having this thing called Inspired to Learn Tour. I literally want to go to school communities all over the country, um, doing sessions, doing workshops. If, any, if either of you, I've, I know I've asked you already, Olaf, because I'm particularly keen to go to Scotland or to do a live stream to Scotland next week. But if either of you can sort of help make that happen, provide some connections to some primary schools, then what we'll do is we'll do a half hour live stream about creativity, about art, about the importance of collaboration, the importance of community, to get those kids to aim high, to have some aspiration, to find their art, whether it's their art. Could, we, we say that art is whatever we, what we call it when what we do connects us to somebody else. So your art could be cooking or coding, robots, rockets, fashion, football, dance, design, DJing, whatever. And, and we've just got to help our kids find a passion to find something that they can get excited about that organisations like yours can tap into, Claire and, and, and Olaf, and, and we can get people on the road to sort of help them find that. And, and that's really what it's about for us. And that's, that's why we, we, we have these I Love Art t-shirts and you, uh, you may have seen some other stuff. So that's the plan, really, to take this on the road for the next three months into schools, to do a half hour live stream and then go into those schools. Have you got a DBS, Claire? You, you DBS checked and everything? Yes. Yeah. So if we, yeah. if, for example, if we came down to some schools down there in the south, on the south coast, for the actual physical bit, what we would look to do within the safeguarding pr protocols of the school is, is to actually have some sessions where the local community comes in and helps us run those activities, making rockets, doing coding, doing some DJing, doing some knitting, whatever, whatever skills are in that community. We bring them into the school and we build those connections um so that that you know really keen to do that and, that, and the other reason sorry claire the other the other serendipitous link to the south coast also in gosport is a school called bridge mary school have you heard of that do you know yeah, yeah. so the, the the head of art and technology there is an amazing woman called emma emma kens and um and we work with her two or three times and she runs the she runs a steam curriculum there and and uses creativity to create relevance across the subjects for those children. So she'll do Harry Potter reading, but they'll make stuff, they'll do technology, they'll do art. And, and I don't know if you've seen, but over the summer, the government got funding for summer schools. So schools can apply for funding to, to run two week summer schools for year seven students coming in. And what we're gonna do is try and find some secondary schools that we can apply for funding and use that funding to help us put a steam coach truck in those areas for the second half of this year. And I, and I and that's why I'm very excited about your area because with Carolyn Dynage in that area as well, and she strikes me as being the sort of person who would roll her sleeves up. So if you're watching now, Caroline Dynage, we're coming for you because we'd like you to roll your sleeves up and make some paper rockets like this. I've got a paper rocket here, it's a bit squashed actually. There's a squashed paper rocket that we've got. We've got an air pressure system that will fire that over a four-story house, 200 feet in the air. I've got dynamite rockets there that I fire as well. And they go four or 500 feet in the air, you know, and, and I don't know who's more excited when I do that, whether it's the parents, frankly, or the kids or the teachers, but it doesn't matter because it's about getting everybody absolutely excited and buzzing and that whole community. And I'll tell you one thing, Caroline Dynage, when she's seen a rocket go off in a school community with a thousand children and parents and teachers, she'll be talking to the Department of Education about rolling this out across the whole country because our champions in government have always been the culture minister. Matt Hancock, when he was the culture minister, he was passionate about art and creativity. And he told us to go and tell head teachers all about it. He was passionate about art and creativity in schools and in prisons, you know. And I, I think in, in Caroline Dynage, there's a similar there's a similar advocate there, you know. Whether or not you voted for the government, whether or not you like them, they're our government, we're paying our taxes. And Caroline strikes me as being the sort of person who's prepared to actually roll the sleeves up and help out. And so, yeah, so that, that's my thought. Olaf, you're obviously across the border there, aren't you? What, what, does this sound familiar for you? Do you, do you, do you think there's, there's potential in Scotland for some of what we're talking about? Well, I think so. I think um, there has to be equal opportunity across the whole of the UK. And there ought not to be any difference regarding children's needs. I think Scotland are trying to place uh, creativity at the at the early stages of 
um, uh, early years, uh, primary one, primary two, and that's more or less a loose, a loose canon in a way. Um, I, I think you mentioned a few things there, Nick, which I'd like to come back to. One of the, you know, we've given you three words each, and you talked about um, what the art can do for an individual, and you cited a whole raft of things. And what Ken Robinson would uh, would say, uh, Nick, which you'll remember, is people finding their element, being in their element. And and I think um, that's that's what we want. That's what we want for all children, all adults, to have a sense of purpose and to feel that. They're in their element, whether they're being making explosives, <laughs> rockets, um, splashing paint, composing, reciting. Um, another thing you said, Nick, was about people in prison. And the system has failed a lot of people in prison, and they've committed, um, committed things which they've, they've been punished for. And it would be great if any of your projects could reach out to prisoners, and I, I'm particularly interested in the work of one organisation in Scotland called Cisco, S I S C O, and Cisco is about um, enabling um, offenders to reintegrate back into the community. So, if you're looking, Nick, for a project um, with adults, then I would, I would. I would fully endorse Cisco. Um, it's led by a really uh, tremendous young woman. Um, I can't say too much because it's very personal about her own story, but you would need to talk to her. She's called Natalie, and uh, you'll find her on my uh, Twitter account. Um, and I really think the world of what she's doing for um, bringing ex-offenders back into the community and giving them some hope, and hopefully for them to find their element, you know. So she's taking them up mountains. Uh, she, she has cafes for them. Um, she she's done she's done some incredible things um, where these people have been forgotten, and, and now you know they, they they have some hope. Yeah, but children, yeah, children are children all over. It would be great if um, you know uh, one of your coaches came to Scotland, came to Dundee. Maybe it could go to Fife. Maybe it could go to Livingston. These are hot spots, and 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 where there is, you know, historically, um, successive governments have failed people um, for whatever reason, you know, um, other priorities, uh, whatever. So I think, you know. Helping deprive deprived communities across the UK um, without being patronising or anything, it gives them a sense of hope. Yeah, it gives them. Sense I, well, of hope. I think that's a, that's a very good point. So, what I'd love to be able to do is, I don't know how, how busy you are at the moment, Taylor, but if there's anything you can do, because it's just me at the moment, unfunded. It's I'm doing everything on my own, and I was told today to simplify it, not extend it out to adults. You know, to keep with children, right. to keep with the work. But I, I believe. That there are three elements to what we're doing at Steam Co. And, and I, I think it's really important that people understand that. It's campaigning for the power of art, creativity, tools, and people. It's about cam campaigning for it. It's about inspiring it by running events like this and over the next week showing the cool stuff so that people understand why creativity is so important in our schools, work, and lives. So that they understand that creativity can be used to engage young people in their learning so that they're inspired to learn. And that's the work we're doing with Gary Spracken in Dorchester. The power of art and creativity in work to fuel the economy. You know, we've got to reinvent and reposition this country. And I stand by the Festival UK 2022 to help put this country back on the map because we, ha we have got to start selling again, you know, to whatever export arrangements are left and are aware for us. And the third thing is that we need to demonstrate the power of art and creativity in our lives to heal this country and to help people with their well-being and to give people a life worth living. Because up to now, education has typically been 
purely to educate people to have enough knowledge to be profitable within the the, the, the I don't really want to say capitalist system particularly, but within our economy and the industrial system particularly. Well, the industrial age is gone. We're now in the connection age. This is the connection economy. And it's all about human connections that make the difference. And technology is just the glue between those, those connections, as far as I see. And the Airbnbs and the Ubers, they're just tech connecting people who have something and somebody else who wants something, as, as Seth Godin has said. So, so for me, we, we campaign for creativity, we inspire it, and we action it. Now, in the short term, that actioning is me and, and hopefully other people going out into the country to run these, these half-day sessions, these full-day sessions, to maybe run after-school sessions, to do an online creativity club, whatever. But ultimately, helping connect organizations that are doing the work you've described there with, with people in hospitals or prisons or people who are, who are sort of below the society radar. I've worked with YMCA's in Stoke-on-Trent. Fantastic time there working with those people. And they loved it. You know, we we made rockets. I'm going to have to think of some more things to do and just making rockets. But it's, it's certainly a good calling card in my experience. I'm rambling on a bit here. What, what, what do you think to that then, Claire? Does is, is this, is this sound, are you glad you came or are you desperate to get off? Because <laughs> we won't keep you much longer. No, I think it all sounds wonderful. And yeah, I'd like to help um, if I can, yeah. So, so you've, you've, you know what Caroline Dynage's garden looks like now. We need you to get on this Google Zoom or whatever, Google Earth, and track her down and pop a letter through her door and invite her in. Yeah. I'm only joking. She's, she's very responsive, and her team are fantastic. We've been very grateful. So, so what we'll do, I always like to give people a 24, 48-hour cool-off period, particularly when I've got them on a live stream, because you, you probably feel like you're pinned against the wall at the moment, don't you? Um, and 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 what's what what I'd be keen to do would be to maybe follow up in the next in the next week or so. In fact, I, w would you like to join us next Wednesday? Um, would you like to sort of do a ten minute, not a ten minute talk as such, but maybe bring some pictures and to talk about the work you've done, the work you're doing, based on what we've discussed tonight, and talk about the Lido project and and obviously that that's. That's a well-being and a health and an exercise angle to that. And you know, that's that's an art in itself. The art of swimming, the art of sport, the art of health exercise. Would you be up for doing that next Wednesday? Yeah, I'll give it a go. We're going to get Olaf on as well, don't worry. Olaf's no, quite pleased. No, Claire, <laughs> oh, it's fabulous, Nick, what, um, what what Claire's doing. And it's beautiful. And her, you ought to see her doodles. They're fantastic. Oh, yeah. I can share some doodles with you. I'm normally very camera shy, so for me, well, you're doing, doing this, brilliant. I'm being very brave. You're brilliant, <laughs> honestly, Nick. She's, Claire's got to be one of your ambassadors in the south, honestly. Well, that's fantastic. That saved me a job because I was going to ask you what you know what <laughs> what what a what twenty two me's look like. We because we, maybe 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 you guys could help us form a little steering committee and we'll work out a job description and work out what it is that these people need to look like and feel like and the, the skills because there are days you know I've, I've spent weeks touring the country um cold calling schools on a on an evening to go in the next morning to see them you know i've done two week tours from nowhere and you know it's it's but it, that that's not sustainable i don't expect anybody to do no, that no of course no, not no 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 uh, i've but, got a nice little team of um of young people um that i'm working with as well so i'm sure that they could take some of the load That'd be fantastic. Well, that's the key, isn't it? And I think it is about empowering young people to take responsibility for their futures and to accept some responsibility in, in mentoring and, and educating other young people in the community that they're that they're part of. Um, I think it's very important to um, work with our young people so that they can be peer educators as well. Um, absolutely. I think that works well. You're using lots of phrases here that are all very trendy educational terms, which I absolutely <laughs> sign up to. No, don't be, don't be ashamed of that because... I, th I think now is the time and, and next Wednesday we'll also we'll probably have an hour under the banner hashtag evolve ed 2021 of how education needs to evolve and why now is the time we had a whole day back in Coventry about it with some amazing speakers and I'll be honest with you I lost my mojo a little bit for the last two or three weeks but having having connected with you tonight and Olaf yesterday you know and I, I'll be honest with you I'd rather have small events like this with one, two, three, five people, because you can have a much more better quality conversation than, than lots and lots of people fighting for attention. Because I believe tonight, Steam Coast got a friend on the South Coast and we've got a friend up there in Dundee. And, and that, that means that that really does mean a, an awful lot, I must admit. 
Any, I think we should probably wrap up. Actually, I, I could just, I could just ramble on all day, as I'm sure you've realised. Um, uh, Nick, Nick, final Nick, words. Go for it. Nick, just before you go, I, I've sent out uh, loads of uh, messages to people who I'd like to be uh, involved in, in following this. Um, Thank you so one much. There's one person in particular who um, I'm very um, supportive of, of her work, and her name is Louise Lowring, and she's head teacher of a school in Telford called Maidley, Maidley the Maidley School primary school and 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 at the heart of all of her learning is is the environment and play and make um so louise would be a, a tremendous ambassador within the, the west midland region well i'm going to tell you a little secret there actually if you if i may in that i'm from shropshire i'm from a place called ludlow just down the road from telford and maidley I, I i know it fairly well and we did do an event at the Ironbridge Gorge Museum. And, and part of the plan, don't tell anybody this, but part of the plan for next year, our Festival 22, is I would love to run a weekend festival at Ironbridge Gorge Museum because that was the birth of the Industrial Revolution. Um, I love the fact that Richard Trevedic came up from Cornwall because nobody in Cornwall could build a boiler as strong as the, uh, the, the Shropshire lads. Um, Matt Hancock spoke at that event for us as well. Um, uh, we've done events in Sunderland with the, with with the, uh, the Sharon Hodgson, who is the cross party chair of the design and art and education. We, you know, this is cross party support, and and so lovely that. So so I, I cut in on your Olaf. I've got so many tangents. I'm loving chatting to you. <laughs> Carry on, <laughs> Nick. Nick, in Ironbridge, you've got a centre there who can be a, a hub for everything you want, and that's the Ironbridge uh, Art Gallery and Museum. And they're friends of mine. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Jenny Gunning is running the framing, printmaking part of that. And her father and I uh, go back a long period in time. We, we went drawing in the Outer Hebrides and also to Orkney. Dave, Dave is a tremendous artist. He has collections of work across the UK and also in uh, devices based on his study of standing stones across the UK, northern France, and, and a further afield in Korea. Um, he's got private uh, print collection in the Royal Collection. So the Gunning family ought to be on your radar if you are looking for, again, ambassadors within Ironbridge. Well, that sounds fantastic. Uh, I, we did an event... I um... used to live in Much Wenlock as well. <laughs> oh, did you? What did you know, Richard Smith, the, uh, the 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 coding tech guy who does a load of stuff with kids in schools? No, I, he's in a little I, village. It was a long time ago. Oh, don't worry. Well, I was in, I was in much Wenlock. I should be careful what I say here. We rented a camper van for the weekend. We got it stuck on a corner in a little village. There's a little village just south of Much Wenlock where you go up a very steep hill. Yes. We got it stuck on the corner there. But that's another story. So no, that's so oh, lots of lovely connections. So I'm going to tell you something now. Then I'm I'm, I'm not going to make a big announcement to this now, but. I'm from Ludlow and I've just been asked, do you, are you familiar with Ludlow? You probably are if you were at yeah. Much Wenlock. So you know the Ludlow Festival? Yes. So I'm I'm over the moon, basically, because the Ludlow Festival have actually just asked me if I'd be the patron of Ludlow Festival this year. Fantastic. And I'm going to spend a whole month working with that community. My home, my mum and dad, my brother's still in the area. I've got friends there and we're going to do a whole month. Well, they've got 70 events lined up and I'm going to, I'm going to help them co-curate three or four of those. But most importantly, do events like this to connect Ludlow Festival with the country and the world, you know. And and I'm I'm so excited about that. And that, that's the first time I've actually mentioned that publicly. But I'm I think that's that's the, that's what comes from these little serendipitous links, isn't it? Really, and 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 sharing that stuff. Brilliant. So can I just say my yes. phone's just about to run out of battery now, so I'm going to have to leave. But it's been absolute pleasure talking to you and um i'll see you next week hang on a second i'm just going to get you up on the screen here actually that was a bit rude I've, <laughs> I've got i'm a bit fingers and thumbs here there's quite a lot going on so what do you think of what we're doing here claire in the last sentence um amazing inspiring and yeah it's nice to meet um like-minded people that um have got the same values and want to do the good stuff well, that's how yeah, art connects, isn't it? it? That, that's what it's all about, mm. how art connects. You've got a teenager wandering around there as well. That's, that's, yeah, uh... I've got a couple. How old, how old are your teenagers? <laughs> one's nearly 15 and one's 17. Same age as mine. Spot on. Two boys. Yeah. 
There we go. Yeah. You're looking good on it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, lovely to talk thank to you. you. We'll be in touch. Um, we'll, we'll, have, we'll get then, you on next you. week. Take care. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye. So, Olaf. Hi. What a lovely connection. Thank you for that. Well, I, I worked hard to get Claire here tonight. I, I, I just think, like you say, serendipity. I think it's just fantastic. I was, you thought I was a lunatic yesterday getting fired up by all of this. It's marvellous. It's great. It's brilliant. We've got, we just had a hello from somebody called Wing Chan. Let's see if we can find out where Wing Chan is from. Hello, Wing Chan. I'm going to type a little message. I don't know if he's if he is in Asia somewhere. Let's let's type a reply. Where are you tonight? I'd love to get a. I'd love I'd love to get an international connection. So he sent yeah, a message sent, at eight twenty one. I have sent your link across to um, to Thailand as well. Yes. Have you? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. 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 To a photographer. Uh, and also to a, a guy I met when I was studying at Margaret Street in 1986-87. Um, and he's he's a professor in Batik. So wouldn't it be great to have um, some workshops run by international artists, you know, and, and shaping some of the uh, work in, in 2022? Absolutely. Well, they've certainly got a lot involved. But I, I, I think we've just got to just open the floodgates. You know, and when, you, when you're doing stuff at grassroots, you can do what the hell you like. You know what I mean? We're not banged by big corporate structures and governance. So I just want to empower lots of people to go out. And it might be that... Yes. It might be if, if Claire were to run a steam stir and a pop up truck down there in um, in in Portsmouth, that yeah. might that might work within slightly different framework to one in Dundee. Now you might in Dundee, it might just be that let's just say there there are a couple of young people what they call NEETs, not in education or employment or training. Yes. They yeah. may feel that they need some framework, they need some support, they need some structure that somebody like you could provide at arm's length or, you know, not you, but somebody like you necessarily. Um, yeah. But in, in Shropshire, there's there's somebody possibly who just does it a bit like I do, you know, but they're all yeah. working with the same values, the same resources, um, the similar message. But it, it, you, 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 you know, this isn't McDonald's, you know, we're, we're not knocking out the same burger absolutely everywhere, but we do do beef burgers or we do veggie burgers everywhere, but there's a, there's a local spin and a flavor. Yes. And as I said to you last night, the education system once was structured for local requirements, not this homogenized national standardized approach. And maybe that's what Absolutely. we can go back to with steam co. Yeah. Again, uh, Nick in Dundee, there's a fantastic resource. I've never seen anything like it. Um, it's called Dundee contemporary arts. Again, it's, it's, it's premises about printmaking um and it, the the facilities are second to none uh, the public can go in and use the resource for all manner of printing they can do laser cutting um uh, it's it's a, a remarkable resource and on it's i would say about 400 yards from the the vna and um it would be a great um a, a great partner um it would be good if if, if Dundee, through its creative uh, industries, can come together around this and look at the issues that you've identified, you know, needs, and, and also perhaps look at the technology side of it, because Dundee's got uh, a, tr a, d a deep history in developing electronic games. That's um, right. Yeah. Rockstar um, games are up there, aren't they? Yes. Um, yeah. Fantastic. And uh, and an idea that I had about two years ago was to um, move things in my own head from it being a centric approach to Dundee's creativity to extend that creativity to neighbouring counties so that if people were coming to Scotland, they didn't just go to, Dun to Dundee, they didn't just go to Dundee, but they went across to Fife or they came across to Angus. I live in Angus, which is about 10 miles from the center of um, Dundee. And and it would be wonderful if there was a light installation and the light installation was exterior, but the beacon was back in Dundee. And then there was this reaching out to a sort of light installations. Um, that's, that's something, I, I just think it would be 
it was quite an awe-inspiring um, installation, you know. Sounds fantastic. Brilliant. I, I think we're, I think we're, we're going to run and run. This is fantastic. It's so great to meet you, Olaf. And that's the power of Twitter Spaces, isn't it? Unbelievable. I, uh, I've had a, look, a little bit more look in, into that and I've registered an interest. <laughs> well, it's funny, actually. One thing that struck me, I did wonder, because we're live streaming at the moment onto Twitter. So oh, I, want, I, I did wonder if I could do a twitter spaces on an account that's also live streaming because i'm live streaming on a laptop but I'm, i would be using spaces on my phone so let me just see if that's an option um yeah it looks like it is um name your space so just let me just try and set one up i'm not going to keep this going i'm just going to run it and see what happens um I'll tell you what I'm going to ask you, actually, Olaf. What if I said if I send you a phrase to you, a hashtag to you, I'd like you to just give me one, two, three sentences in in response to that as a provocation. Yeah, nothing oh, to write right. down. Nothing to write down. No, no. The, the phrase uh -huh. is hashtag I am creative. Yeah. What's your response that. to that? What's your response to that? Um, I am creative. I, I'd like to be, yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting response. Well, I have all intentions of being creative. Um, I think I may have mentioned to you, I've got this large project on, and uh, it's consuming lots of my time. And I suppose I'm frightened to um, step out of that to do something creative in case it goes wrong, you know? Um, yeah, it sounds awful, that, but there we are. Well, it's interesting, actually. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't given it much thought, and I haven't been able to give an awful lot of time to much of this at all, because I've been doing lots of stuff. But it's interesting how you felt that the I was you. Ah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about that phrase, I am creative, and I'm thinking that, that that's something that, Everybody should be able to say, we're all born artists, as Picasso, wasn't it? We're all born creative, we're all born artists. Yet we allow that to be taught out of us and not nurtured and not developed. And I think the World Internet, so the World uh, Creativity and Innovation Week is gonna have a lot of events. One of my friends left Teres Heritakis from He's actually in Spain at the moment. He's doing a very interesting event next Wednesday, which is Can You Teach Creativity? Um, which, which a lot of people seem to think you can't. Well, I believe you can. I'm sure you do. We're not going to worry too much about that at the moment. But, you know, I, th I think there are lots of interesting conversations, lots of interesting questions to be had. And I can run a space, so nobody's turning up. So I'm going to close that, but that's fine. At least I know that works. We can do that another night. The other... The other challenge I've got, if I run if I run a space on here, which you've got to understand, Olaf, is I've got to get I've got to be able to plug my phone into my vision mixer and my audio mixer so that the audio goes straight into the system and the audio from the system goes straight into the phone. And one thing we all I don't know how technical you are, but one thing we take for granted with Zoom and Skype and all these systems is that they when they send the signal back to us, they take us out of the signal coming back so that you don't hear yourself echoed. And believe it or not, I've got a 32 channel audio mixer in front of me that's doing all that across six different buses. And it's so complicated. So I would have to I'd have to make sure that the microphone audio back to that was everything minus what it was sending to me. <laughs> so I'll have to work that out there. But I was going to try that tonight. But I'd have to get some plugs for that. Did you ever see the video, um, the Steam Co. We Are Artists oh, film? A big one. Did you ever see the We Are Artists film, the Steam Co. sort of five or six minute film about what we do and what we've been up to? No. Would you like to see that now as a as a as an ending? Yes, please. Because I'd I'd like to actually sort of play that as a little finale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jiggle this around here, and I am going to reconfigure this so i'm going to put you over there so you're going to jump from one side 
Uh, duh, duh, duh. You're going to go over there. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's okay. So that, that's actually a sneaky. You can actually see on that screen there everything that I'm seeing. That's the system I've got in front of me. Right, right. How scary is that? It's pretty full on, isn't it? <laughs> Terrifying. Yeah. So I've I've actually just dis, I've just managed to display the wrong image up on the screen. I don't even know which one that is actually. So that that's what I'm looking at with all my audio controls down here and and yeah. yeah so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, just why I need my glasses because it's so tiny. So it wasn't that one. It was number forty. So let's try that one. That's better. So you're over there. And where you were, I'm going to put our video there. And say goodbye. Thank you so much, Olaf, for joining us tonight. Pleasure. And we'll be in touch. All right, Nick. Thank you very much. We're all born artists. The problem is to remain an artist as we grow up. That was Pablo Picasso. And I, and I think... We've got to help our kids, all our kids, aim high in life. Not just high, but higher than high. We've got to help our kids find their passion, their art. So I'm Nick Corston. I'm, I'm just a dad. I'm co-founder of Steamco. Um, one day maybe I'll be the CEO, I don't know. So Steamco is a non-profit community enterprise that helps connect our kids with their art and our communities with their schools by running Creativity Days. And we want to get the whole community involved. We want people who've had kids, not had kids, got kids, whatever, to come and work with us to help us run these days. It's magic. It's magical. What inspired me? Well, I saw a talk by Sir Ken Robinson. I read half a book called What's the Point of School on what we should be teaching our kids. And I went to Camp Bestel, which is really a Bastonbury for kids. And I thought, I want this in my kid's school. I've got a lovely little film my dad gave me of me when I was one and him with my first ever train set. And I show that to kids in schools all over the country. And how my dad gave me the greatest gift. He gave me my art. Because art, art is what we call it when what we do might connect us to somebody else. So art could be painting, it could be photography, it could be cooking, it could be coding, it could be dancing, it could be design, it could be DJing, it could be robots, it could be rockets. The fun, the excitement that we have making and firing rockets in schools is to be seen to be believed. This is the best show of my life. This truck contains everything you need to run a creativity festival in a primary school. 30 coding kits with a BBC micro bit. We've got rocket making kits. We do cardboard challenge. We can do the, the egg drop. We've got t-shirt printing machines so we can print I Love Art t-shirts. So the kids design their own logo, take a selfie. We've had thousands of posters of those done. That's with JR, French street artist JR. So we've got communities all over the country designing I Love Art logos taking photos and we sent them off to JR and he's printed a thousand of these off for us, which we fly posting all over the country. So. <laughs> In lockdown, we got an Arts Council grant and we built a green screen TV studio. We've been live streaming events all summer. We did a three day Glastonbury event where we built a half sized pyramid stage from cardboard and code and ran three day events. We had Martin and Gary Kemp. We had Glenn Matlock from Sex Pistols on stage alongside community artists, dads and their kids. And we had a young lad um, from Leeds called Nenny who played um, his piano on stage, all virtual. And that's what we want to do. Lockdown's not going to lift in a hurry. And we're running festivals from a spare bedroom here in Paddington. But we need people involved. We want people to collaborate for creativity. For me, collaboration is everything. Elton John gave me the greatest gift, actually. He made a film, I don't know if you saw it, with John Lewis, where basically he tells the story of how he was given a piano as a kid and worked hard and made literally a million. I saw that film, ripped it off, put our own subtitles on it, and Elton John retweeted it. It had 50,000 views in an hour, and I went on a two-week UK tour from Cornwall all the way to Carlisle, showing that film, showing my train set film, talking to kids about art and creativity, letting off rockets, and inspiring schools across the country in our 12 days of Creative Christmas tour. You've inspired one little boy in particular, a very quiet boy, and as that rocket shot into the air, we heard the words blast off, 
come out of his mouth. Innovation, technology, and dreams rocketing up to the sky. The state education system, we have a lot of people feel it's been narrowed and narrowed and narrowed, focusing on teaching and testing of highly academic subjects, which are important, which are right for some kids, but it's not for everybody. And some kids come out of the education system literally broken. Nine out of ten schools in Britain have reported cutting the arts in some way or another, which is a real tragedy. And we're going to lose that cutting edge creativity that made Britain so famous. Creativity is Great Britain, after all. The ideal future for me would be a whole load of these trucks on the road with passionate, enthusiastic, committed, creative people helping connect kids with their art and communities with their schools all the way across the UK. As Albert Einstein said, imagination can take us anywhere. So what do you think of that, Olaf? Fantastic, brilliant. Welcome to, my, welcome to my crazy, crazy world. <laughs> and that's, no, a film, that's a film that a dad in my son's school made for me, Chris Sullivan. I like who, to have steam de, um, day in my class. Absolutely. Uh, it was just, just wonderful. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up there now, I think. Um, Olaf, it's been really amazing to connect with you. And if, frankly, if nothing else comes to this, I think you know, we've, we've achieved a lot in just this short period of time. Um, Last sentence from you. Last, last, last thought. Well, I, I, I wish I wish you well with the project. Um, it, it is daunting. Um, there'll, there's still a lot to happen between now and next week, um, and I'm confident you'll pull it off. I'm not phased by that. I've just all I've got to do is I've got four thousand names in the database. I've just got to get an email out to them tomorrow to say what we did tonight. Um, that we've we've started small. We've got the technology working. We had a crash. We're, we're not too phased by that. You know, it might not work, but here's the thing: the guy who invented the ship also invented a shipwreck. And either you're in or you're out. Either you want to play this game or you don't, because art isn't something we do which is conventional and boring and industrialized. For me, art is what we do when we're truly alive, and and that's a Seth Godin phrase. And I'm sure that resonates with you as it does me, because I sense a lot of common ground between both of us, Olaf. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll be in touch. I'm going to play out Thank with you. this film. Very, very grateful to the World Creativity and Innovation Week and Day kicking off today. We're running not just till next Wednesday. We're going through to the following Saturday. So basically what we're going to be doing in a nutshell is tomorrow, just a little bit more of this. Saturday, we're going quiet in remembrance of uh, Prince Philip, who was an amazing engineer and innovator and creative and doer. Um, and we'll, 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 we'll just go quiet for the day in recognition of that. Sunday, I've got to drive. I've got to pack all this up and drive down to Dorset to, um, to set it all up because we're doing a day live streaming with Prince of Wales School on Monday um, with uh, Mr. Spracklin and launching our Inspired to Learn 21 summer term. We're going to go to school communities across the country. We're live streaming initially. And on the basis of tonight, I'm going to say here and now, I am driving to Dundee in the next six weeks. And that will be a three, two or three week road tour. And I'm going to drive and I'm going to go and shake Olaf's hand for supporting us and being there for us tonight. Because it's people like that that remind me how art connects. Next Wednesday is World Creativity and Innovation Day. Thursday, Friday, we're going to Wales. We're going to Northern Ireland. Saturday, we're doing a speaker conference, um, the Aspire Power Arts Conference. Olaf, I've talked enough. Thank you so much. I'm going to play this video, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.
Thank you.